Raiders standings in recent years and has never won at Kentucky Derby. Mexico has won two of them. You only get one shot at the Kentucky Derby. It's for three-year-olds over a mile and a quarter. And here are the 18 horses for the 130th running. Stable colors. One of two horses in the race trained by Tom Fletcher, ridden by Jose Santos, who won the Derby last year on Funny Side. Winner of the Hutchison and Tampa Bay Derby, then third to the Cliff's Edge in the Bluegrass Stakes. Number two, Song of the Sword, trained by Jennifer Peterson, giving us two female trainers in the race. First time that's happened in 130 years. Second in the Illinois Derby, third in the Lexington Stakes at Keeneland. The free horse, and everyone expects him to go to the front. Lionheart, under Mike Smith, just arrived this morning. He's been training at Keeneland about 80 miles away. The owners paid $1.4 million for him as a two-year-old. Second in the San Rafael, second to the Cliff's Edge in the Bluegrass States. Number four action this day, the champion from a year ago. After winning the Breeders' Cup, Jim Hill trying to break the jinx. Since his win in the Breeders' Cup, he's been fourth, seventh, and sixth. Number five, Wimbledon was scratched. Number six is Franz Lake, trained by John Kimmel. Off seven weeks since winning the Florida Derby at odds of 37 to 1. No more since Nicholas in 1956 has come in and won the Derby without a race in April. Number seven is Minister Eric. Minister Eric giving Pat Day his 22nd Derby mount, was second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile to action this day. Has had no stakes experience since then, though, three allowance races, including a win at Keeneland in his last. Number eight is Master David. That's the Franklin trainee, ridden by Alex Solis. Second in the Wood Memorial after a two-month layoff because of illness. Pretty impressive race. The nine horse St. Amber was scratched. Number 10 is Imperialism, the most experienced horse in the field with 15 lifetime starts. Can't the Soro up. Winner of the San Vincente and the San Rafael. And then third in the Santa Anita Derby, but interfered with and moved up to second. Number 11, the Cliff's Edge. Nick Zito looking for another Derby win. This was the least impressive of his Derby horses to start the year. Now he is the best of his Derby horses. He's named for Equibase and Racing Forum chart caller with Williams, winner of the Bluegrass Stakes. 12 is Borrego. It's horns in Spanish. He has a couple of calcium deposits on top of his head that kind of look like horns. That's how he got his name. Bo Greedy not only trains, but is part owner and part breeder of this colt, who is a late foal, May 17th, and has been second his last three starts. There's Birdstone in the Mary Lee Whitney stable colors, the famous Whitney Eaton Blue and Brown, with Whitney Bloodlines as well. He's had a rough spring, though, since winning the Champagne in the fall. He was fifth in the lanes in as the favorite, and then got sick trying to make a big comeback today in a tough spot. Number 14, Read the Footnotes, a New York bred who's been off seven weeks since he ran Fourth is the favorite in the Florida Derby. He was very impressive before that, though, in winning the Fountain of Youth. Fifteen is Smarty Jones, that $5 million bonus. And Stuart Elliott, first time in the Derby, but he's 39 years old and has ridden over 3,000 winners. Based in the Philadelphia Park, Smarty, as you see, six for six. Number 16 is Castledale, the Irish bred winner of the Santa Anita Derby. Frank Lyons, who picked him out in Ireland, is Irish himself, a former trainer, now a TVG commentator. Winner of the Santa Anita Derby at 30 to 1. Corey Nakatani still in the saddle. Steve Asmussen trains Quinton's Gold Rush and won the Lexington in his final prep and expected to show some speed from the outside post, post position 20. And that's the field for the 130th running of the Kentucky Derby. We're just minutes away now from the run for the Roses. say a moment ago that in the now 130 year history of the Kentucky Derby this is only the fourth time that the track has officially been listed as sloppy the last time was 10 years ago 1994 the race was won by Gopher Gin trained by Mitsido who has the cliff's edge in today's derby there is no rain at all falling at the moment but the skies continue to look like they could open up at any moment let's go back to Tom Hammond all right Bob and we'll check the odds quickly with Lionheart down to five to one now Double digits on the others. Imperialism, a 10 to 1 shot there. Master David also a 10. The Cliff's Edge, 8 to 1. A little surprising. Smarty Jones, 4 to 1, the favorite. And Tappet at 6 to 1. And the owner of Smarty Jones, Roy Chapman, has gotten out of his wheelchair to watch the race. Carries an oxygen bottle with him. He has emphysema. He'll have his.
his 78th birthday in three days. What a birthday present this would be. There's Marty Jones in the blue colors of the Chapmans. And Donna, the track looks uh, like it's starting to run already. How is the track play? Donna Bart? Tom, if you just take a look out at the racetrack, it really just looks like it has water on top. This track holds up awfully well to water, but it's had an awful lot of water in it. And I think when you see the running of the race, you're going to see the water come up from the bottom. Uh, right now, I'm keeping an eye on Friends Lake, who's going to be the first to load into the gate. He's had some bad gate habits, as we've talked about, and they are trying to get that horse in the gate right now. He's going to load first, and all the rush is low behind him, and it looks like he's gone in without incident, Tom. Huh? All right. Donna Martin Brothers, who is tracking us on our pony Cisco. Bob Baffert's horse will him a scratch, but his pony Cisco, so Baffert represented here today as Donna's trusty mount. They're starting to load in for the Kentucky Derby. Now, we'll also keep an eye on Smarty Jones. Remember, Smarty is the number 15 horse. Remember we talked about the accident he had in the gate where he reared up and had a horrible accident, fracturing his skull. Sometimes he can be just a bit reluctant to go in, too, right now. They're having trouble uh, getting Is that Limehouse? They're having trouble getting in, Charles? Limehouse is getting a little problem to load. He pitched a bit here last year when he won a stake, uh, when he ran in the stake here a year ago, but uh, seems to be in now and no problem. Birdstone goes in and Song of the Sword. And there's the horse that many expect will show the early speed. Lionheart from the number three post under Mike Smith. 14 is Read the Footnotes. Many people think he has a big chance. After winning the Fountain of Youth at Gulfstream, he bounced, as they say, in horse circles, which means that it took so much out of him he didn't have much left for the Derby, but many think he'll come back for that seven-week layoff. Smarty went in without a problem. You saw Smarty in the blue, number 15, go in without a problem here. Number 16, Castledale, winner of the Santa Anita Derby. 17 is Pollard's vision, blind in the right eye. They try to keep him on the outside so that he can see all the horses inside. And you'll see him cock his head a little bit to get full vision from his good left eye. A great master David goes in. There's the 18 Tappet. One of the betting choices. And for the call of the 130th Kentucky Derby on a sloppy track, let's go upstairs and join Tom Durkin for the call. Tom? Pro Prado moving into post position. Uh, number 17 in this field of 18, and the final horse to move into line on the far outside will be Quentin's Gold Rush. Quentin's Gold Rush who could be looking for that early lead today. Quentin's Gold Rush is uh, just the last one behind the gate, and he's giving the assistant starter a little problem here. Quentin's Gold Rush and talking no Corey Nakatani, the horses to look for leaving the starting gate will be Quentin's Gold Rush, number 10, Smarty Jones, number 15, who's got some speed, and Lionheart.